I'm Manuel Copas, um, as you know, from TGAC. And this first talk of today is going to be on BioJS, which is basically a resource, community-built resource, which has, in my view, quite a lot of similarities in terms of the community that we have here for Gmod. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to lots of synergies through this, um, through this event. This is work that has been led by Rafael Jimenez. You can see his name there. He's going to join us tomorrow. And um, I'm also quite involved in the coordination of the, of the, of the project, uh, building communities, the social engineering, and so on. So what's the background for BioJS? Obviously, BioJavaScript is what we are talking about here. And this is a typical scenario for a JavaScript application in the life sciences. Well, you don't have a lot of time, so you create your own, <coughs> very quickly, your, your um, JavaScript application that probably is going to be used only once, and you don't care about the documentation because, you know, if you really want to get your job quickly, dirty, and, and, and just done it. Um, that is, actually, if you want to look for a particular um, application in JavaScript so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, um, where do you look? Well, you do a Google search and you find all these um, applications. Many of them are dead. Other ones, you know, don't properly work. Other ones, some others really, you know, don't do exactly what you want to do. Um, so this is a very typical scenario. In, in, the, in the life sciences community, especially when you want to develop web applications. And what we found is that there are no um, sort of, there is no, not a, cons a consistent place where you can find all of these JavaScript uh, places. So this is just to reiterate what I've just said. So if you want to discover a particular uh, application, there is no registry. Uh, no examples with which to test your, your, uh, ap an application that you might want to reutilize. So be basically, there is a mess uh, in, in, in what it is, the reutilization and, and applications for JavaScript. So here we come. Uh, BioJS uh, is a coordinated effort based at the EBI, but there are also many other places that are collaborating, among them TGAC, and I hope that after this meeting, Gmod will be um, involved in this, in this community. So we provide a, a set of guidelines to, on how applications for JavaScript uh, visualization techniques, visualization uh, components should be developed so that at the end of the day, we end up with a standard, consistent way of modules that can be easily reutilized by the community and by people who are interested. People who contribute to this effort is gonna, are going to get the, the recognition that they deserve. Um, and mo moreover, people, once they learn how to develop a particular component or once they know, learn how to install a particular component, it's very easy for them to develop or reuse new components because they all have the same basic and fundamental ar architecture. So as of today, there are 29 components that have been released and obviously they are all open source and uh, we hope that this is going to increase dramatically in the next few years. Um, we, we have a centralized repository that is available for anyone who wants to use these applications, you can search and you can find every, all of the functionalities that are available. Um, here, I'm just giving you a list of some of the, I say, featured features. <laughs> uh, for example, dash protein feature uh, viewer. Then we have the gene expression summary that basically integrates the gene expression atlas database and, and, and with published studies and so on. Uh, protein 3D, uh, the chromosome view. I mean, how many times have you tried to you know, visualize your particular features 
um, in your website and basically you have to end up having to rewrite the chromosome view. I mean, uh, there, are, there are many, many different reasons why I think that, you know, this kind of reinventing the wheel hopefully should be solved in some respects by using some of the components here. Obviously, don't expect that you are going to find everything that you are looking for in here. Hopefully, you know, by combining the efforts, we'll end up having a sort of open bio X, you know, like bio Perl or bio Java community where you, you're going to get all of these different uh, applications available. This is just to show you an example. So we have the sequence, which um, here you can see is a Swiss, Swiss prod sequence that, and this is just a screenshot from the, from the website. Uh, there's another one here. This is the gene expression summary. Uh, again, you can, the, the, the cool thing is that you have all these different tabs in there where it shows how it looks or how it should look like. Then the, the it's quite well documented. You have the installation notes. You have even here on the right hand side, you have the different methods that are involved in uh, the, the, the components that uh, form this, this particular module. This is just to show that uh, the, the publication is now, now going out in, um, is, is so as of last month. And so it's a very, very big um, initiative, no, not, not just me or, or Rafael. The next thing I wanted to do now is to give you a small brief tour of the registry live. So it might not work, but let's try. <laughs> um, so we have a Google code page. So you have here um, the overview, obviously, and then quite a nice, lovely picture of in fact, this is our logo, these, these uh, circling arrows. Um, depending on the day and on the mood, they have different colors. Today is green. Um, so if you click on the registry, so you can see the different components that are to, to be shown. Sequence, this is the one I just show, showed before. Um, so I can select this, and you can see actually on the right hand panel, um, how the events change, how the different functions interact with each other. Um, so it's, it's, it's really nicely laid out for people to understand and to be able to reutilize this quite easily. Um, again, if you click on the installation, it's reasonably well documented. You, need, you have there the, the code that you, you can cut and paste in the right place uh, in your website. Uh, clicking on, op on options, so you can have a description of how to actually customize the visualization of the sequence component for your particular needs. And clicking on methods, you can see, again, reasonably well-documented set of methods available for this, for this particular component. Same for events. Um, I can show you another one, which is the gene expression summary. Um, I showed this before. So if I click on view all, you can have all of the different terms that are specifically related to a cell type in, in the ASPM differential expression. Uh, summary. So same as I showed before. Again, we have, as I say, 29 um, components. It's reasonably well documented. We just need to, now is the, is the time for the community building, the social engineering, the making sure that people know about this project. And I look forward to talking to each one of you if you are interested. And um, thanks very much for giving me this opportunity to talk today. I'll be talking later on about something completely unrelated. But um, again, thank you for giving me this chance. And I'll just finish with the acknowledgments slide.
And any questions, I'll be happy to answer them now or later. Thank you. Right. So it has a lot of uh, widgets. It's, it's a works with widgets. Right. And I'm wondering if it's possible to integrate or to, to make it an operation within your uh, library. And that sounds really cool. Would you like to work on that? <laughs> <laughs> I can. You can. Uh, maybe not now. Right, OK. <laughs> As I say, you know. If, if you contribute to that, your, your name will be on the paper. That's what we're. Yeah, components, yeah. yeah. In, with uh, more generic uh, widget like uh, framework? Well, this is framework agnostic. So in principle, it should, it should be compatible. So that's, that's how we design it to be made. I don't know is the answer. Uh, well, I would say really that um, anything that can be sort of integrated via um, web services or Ajax or this kind of thing, I, I, don't, I don't, again, I don't see that it will necessarily require any specific um, development for these kind of applications, I, again, some components will require a very specific set of requirements. It will depend, basically. So this is not a component framework on the back end? So no. It's on the front? No, no. Yes, it's, it's only front end. Thank you.